Microscopes. More on microscopes. This is just an additional bit of detail that you OCR students need to know. So I'm tacking it on the end. I'm going to go with a little bit of a summary to begin with of the different types of microscope from lowest resolution to highest resolution. Okay, so lowest resolution, easiest to use is a light microscope. Next up is the one we're going to focus on in this tutorial mostly, is the laser scanning confocal microscope. Then we have a scanning electron microscope. I'm actually just going to be lazy and write SEM. And then highest resolution, we've got transmission, a TEM. Okay, so what can we see with each of these things? Well, with a light microscope, we can see whole cells and tissues. Laser scanning confocal microscope, you can see an object a certain depth within a cell. Scanning electron microscope. You can see cell surfaces in lots of detail, but only the outside. And with a transmission electron microscope, you can see the organelles. Just a reminder, resolution is the ability to separate two objects. Okay, so let's look at the laser scanning confocal microscope. What you do is you attach a fluorescent dye to the cell or to the specimen, the thing or the organelle that you want to look at. You then shine a laser beam, which is light, just focused light, onto a specific part of the cell. The laser causes the object to fluoresce, to give off um, some other light. So we can say light fluoresces. And then we can say a pinhole, which is that sort of a key term here. A pinhole sits in front of the detector, which is going to catch this fluorescent light. And this is going to eliminate the light that comes from other depths within the cell. I'm going to actually draw the image and then the diagram, and then you're going to have a better idea of what I'm talking about here. Okay, so I'm going to draw a cell. Obviously, it's three-dimensional, but we're only drawing it in 2D. And here we've got two different organelles. I'm going to draw a mitochondrion here, and I'm going to draw a lysosome or something here. So they're at different depths within the cell. Our laser beam is going to come in it's going to strike both of these things just about and that's going to cause them to fluoresce if they've absorbed the dye but let's say they've both absorbed this dye and it's going to be then shine out this light so and let's say this is contacted this one as well this is the laser beam going in and then we have a screen with a pinhole and then my detector is going to sit behind this screen. So this then is going to continue through and hit the detector. But obviously the light that's come from other objects at different depths within the cell are going to hit the screen and they're not going to reach the detector. The position of the de detector behind the pinhole is going to determine which bits of light at which depth within the cell are seen. So the pinhole sits in for this is the pinhole. So 
So this eliminates the out of focus light. And the out of focus light comes from different depths from within the cell. So we can look at some of the advantages and disadvantages. You get much higher resolution than normal light microscopes. And you can view objects inside cells. Disadvantages, they don't tend to ask this. Is that they're much more expensive and be careful when talking about cost because they don't always accept that as a valid disadvantage. If you get a disadvantage question, it's probably going to be that the resolution isn't as high as an electron microscope, especially a transmission electron microscope, which you can also see inside of cells. This is all very expensive, fancy bits of kit. This is a pretty bad representation of what's actually happening, but it was the easiest way that I can put across to show you how at being different depths within the cell, you can get light coming out at different angles, basically.